Hi, and thank you for joining us to review the interpretive plan and exhibit concepts for John Chavis Memorial Park. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Um, I should say this presentation is being recorded instead of having our scheduled open house at Top Green Community Center on December 1st. And due to the more recent restrictions from Governor Cooper, we decided it was best to not host that in-person meeting and instead do some other things um, to get the word out of what we're doing and get feedback. And this is one. So I have my consultants here on the team, uh, Inga Kennedy, Julia Cutler, and Therese Huffman to help me explain um, the project and where we're at. My name is Luke Wallenbeck. I'm a project manager for the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Resources Department. And we've been working on this project for a few months now. Um, the scope is to develop an interpretive plan for the whole park and to also develop a exhibit to be designed and implemented um, for the opening of the entire improvement project um, scheduled around June 1st. Next slide, please. So this shows a little bit about the schedule and the way we've divided it into phases. We've completed phase one and that was focused on um, doing research and building review teams and the advisory committee made up of community members, um, identifying key stakeholders in the community as well, those keepers of history. And um, that led us into phase two where the focus was on not just understanding the park and the community, but really developing some key messages and directions um, that folks want to go in terms of interpretation. And one great thing is that we're doing the planning and the design in parallel. So that helps us compress the whole schedule and meet that June deadline. So here we are in phase two, and we'd really love your feedback um, on the, particularly at this point, the, the messages and the way they relate to these preliminary design concepts that we're going to show today. And that will help us um, go into phase three with confidence that we're heading in the right direction. Um, and really, January 14th will be the next chance for the public to see um, our final design concept and our final plan. And then we'll head to the Parks Board and City Council to present those results. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Juliet Cutler to start um, talking about the messages uh, that we are have developed. Julia? Okay. Thanks, Luke. So I'd like to start today by going over the key outcomes that we've developed for interpretation in the park. So these are the goals that we have for interpretation and they guide the messages that we've developed as well as some of the concepts that you'll see later in today's presentation. So the first of these is that visitors should understand the park's hidden history or the cultural and historical significance of John Chavis Memorial Park. The second outcome is that visitors should feel the park is a special place that welcomes everyone. The third, uh, visitors should feel the park is a symbol of African American community, agency, and identity. The fourth, visitors should enjoy the park and be inspired to create and share their own memories. And the fifth and final outcome is that visitors should engage as stewards, volunteers, and advocates of the park. So from those key outcomes, we identified some interpretive messages that clarify and limit the focus of interpretation and the scope of our exhibits, as well as express that significance of John Chavis Memorial Park. We have six key messages. The first one is about John Chavis. And you'll see a second page associated with each of these key messages that details more information uh, about <clears throat> each of these big ideas. So these uh, pages would be available on the city's website for you to review further, uh, should you be interested in doing that. The second uh, interpretive message is around segregation to integration. So this really deals with the park's founding up through uh, 1964 when, um, when uh, Raleigh was integrated. And so there are some very significant stories here about uh, the regional significance of the park to the African-American community. 
The next theme deals uh, with a place to gather and celebrate. So this is a sort of light, fun theme that talks about the ways people uh, saw the park as the backyard for the neighborhood and uh, the living room in many ways, gathering here uh, to celebrate key events in life, uh, as well as just coming together on a Sunday afternoon uh, to have a picnic. And so you'll see uh, many stories have been pulled from oral histories related to this particular theme. The next one is a legacy of service and this uh, predominantly focuses on World War II, but also so broadly focuses on African-American military service, uh, uh, both prior to integration and after. And so there are some key stories here about the Montfort Point Marines, as well as the Tuskegee Airmen. In addition, there's a story here about um, the USO service for uh, African-American service members during World War II in Raleigh. There were two chapters there, one of which was quite close to the park. Uh, there were tents in the park that housed soldiers who were on leave in Raleigh. And so uh, there's also a, a story directly related to John Chavis Memorial Park. Uh, particularly related to World War II. Uh, the next theme is about athletics and athletes in the park. And as you can see from the next slide, there's a long list of people who trace their uh, athletic prowess to John Chavis Memorial Park, including professional athletes and state champions. Uh, so this part, uh, this theme deals with that particular uh, storyline. And the last one is about nature in my neighborhood. And this takes a look at uh, Little Rock Creek, which flows through the park and uh, provides habitat to a lot of different creatures that call the park home. Uh, this would offer an opportunity for some environmental education and for people to learn about uh, nature in their neighborhood. Uh, the other thing we've begun to look at now is interpretive programs and events that might be offered in the park. So these are things that would help to tell those stories. Uh, and there are some things that have been done historically that are noted here and then some new ideas as well. So uh, the city of Raleigh has a circle of friends program. They've offered school and after school programs. Uh, there might be an opportunity to do some outreach to higher education. Uh, Chavis Park Celebrates has been an, an event that happens uh, family frolic is sort of a teenage frolic revival. Uh, Self-guided tours could be offered. Uh, History harvest is a new idea where community members might be invited in to share their stories, which would then be used uh, in interpretive elements in the park. Uh, there's a desire for some concerts, maybe some that could have a historical focus like music of the 1940s, uh, farmers markets, and then potentially a historical amusements festival. Uh, some of the partners, uh, at Chavis Park could also offer some interpretive programming. Some is already being developed and offered. Uh, Sperna, for example, has a historical walking tour. The Walnut Creek Wetland Center, which is south of the park, uh, currently offers at their facility, uh, kids, kids Nature's Day, school and after school programs and environmental education programs. So the idea there might be that they could potentially be a partner who would offer some after school or weekend programs at the park focused on Little Rock Creek. Uh, Capital Area Greenway uh, runs through the park and it might be possible that they could do a historical bike tour that would bring people from a, a broader area to the park. And the City of Raleigh Museum uh, might be able to offer pop-up exhibits or history programs. So with that, I will turn it over to Therese to talk a little bit about the concepts. Therese, uh, you need to unmute, Therese, Therese. <laughs> so I will be showing six design concepts. These design concepts address the key themes Juliet just spoke about. This first design concept is addressing the theme, John Chavis. John Chavis welcomes you to the John Chavis Memorial Park. This is a concept for an immersive archway to create a welcoming sense of arrival. Who better to lead visitors into the park than the man who the park was named after? The exhibit theme is John Chavis welcomes you to the John Chavis Memorial Park. The approach is, as I said, an immersive archway. Location would be a key entrance or entrances into the park. 
The design features are the use of colored glass-like substrate and mosaic, which is evocative of the art glass by David Wilson in the new community center. The design is reminiscent of stained glass in church windows, which is appropriate to John Chavis because he was a preacher. It is a triangular three-sided gateway arch. The imagery is built from historic photographs and other references structured in a rectangular grid of colored glass shapes. The imagery would be graphics and text that speak to John Chavis's life, beliefs, and teachings. And you can see in the lower left-hand cor corner, the color palette. And this is picked up from uh, David's glass, David Wilson's art glass and the colors of that um, of his art class. Um, there would be interpretive text using short phrases and key keyword pullouts. It's internally lit for legibility and guidance to the entrances, creating a sense of place both day and night. We would also use QR codes on the structure to provide deeper dives into more information. Uh, next slide. So this design concept addresses the theme, segregation to integration. This is called reflecting on history of segregation to integration from the period of 1930 to 1960. Um, the exhibit theme is reflecting on the history of segregation to integration from the 1930s dur during the Jim Crow era when the park was built to the integration of Raleigh's public facilities in the 1960s. The design approach are two large glass-like panels that stand at opposing angles to each other. The left panel speaks to what separate but equal segregation looked and felt like in contrast to the right panel, which speaks to the integration experienced by the community. The location is to be determined, but this, these panels could straddle a pathway. The design features are the use of colored glass-like substrate and mosaic supported in metal frames. The exterior graphics are prismatic and emotional, such as you can see the graphic style here in the lower left-hand corner, what a prismatic style would look like. Um, the interior imagery is more formal and literal, using image, quotes, and contextual phrases to provide information to learn and reflect upon. The visitor's experience is a sense of being inside. It is also internally lit for legibility both day and night. And you can see what would happen here. Um, the imagery that we would be using in the, pardon me, in the left panel, talking about segregation, are in black and white. The only film color available during those times, which I think is an ironic metaphor. Um, whereas in contrast, the integration images of the 1960s will be in color per era when Kodachrome and Technicolor film was invented. Next. Next slide. This concept addresses the theme, a place to gather and celebrate making memories. These are memory collect collection respites. The theme is let's go to the park. John Chavis Memorial Park is a beloved gathering place that reflects the importance of community, the power of collective memory and the significance of connection to neighbors. The design approach are slat wall respites that provides space for a rest to recall fond memories of fun at the park. The location is to be determined. However, we might want suggestions by the landscape architects of the park to suggest that this might be located in a quieter space and as a grouping of four rather than singularly spread out through the park. Um, the design features, the shelter's construction is made with slat wall panels covered with louvered historic imagery on all sides and ceilings. You can see an example of lenticular graphics in the lower left-hand photograph. The louvered lenticular images will move and change when viewed from different angles. This allows for the graphics to show different imagery that can be seen from approaching on the left side versus the right. Also different when viewed from the front. The interior of the respites fits approximately four to six people each family and friends groups. The groupings can feel separate, but together, uh, which is something very important to all of us right now and probably into the future. The interior furniture can be adaptable to form chairs into tables or the other way around. Again, we see the use of QR codes to provide access to deeper dives for videos and images of fun times at the park 
and uh, an opportunity to upload your best memory and memories of what is there for you, what you are experiencing today. Um, next slide. This next design concept is addressing the theme nature in my neighborhood. This is a creation of augmented reality of an um, augmented reality hub, an immersive playscape with unique experiential surfaces. The exhibit theme is Little Rock Creek, which flows through the park, provides important healthy habitat for birds, frogs, tadpoles, native plants, and other living things. The approach is an immersive playscape, with, which includes a cube cutout interactive experience and other experiential surfaces. The location could be near the playground in a plaza created for, especially for it. The design features are a cube cutout, which has interior surfaces covered with nature images, QR codes, and augmented reality markers to bring to life the Little Rock Creek's living things. You can see brightly colored metal strips that create pathways for following, whimsical playing, and resting spots. Photo opportunities abound throughout this entire space. We could see um, markers, codes, you know, moving around the plaza that pre provides an opportunity to discover. Um, the augmented reality experience could be somewhat like what is happening here down at the lower left-hand corner images, which are examples of augmented reality from Internet of Elephants, a program by National Geographic Explorer Gautam Shah. The playscape would need to be uniquely designed for John Chavis Memorial Park, the cube and cutout can be a different shape. Programming can, could be happening in the playscape, i.e. a program by Walnut Creek Wetland Center, for example, Frog Friday. Um, the augmented reality program, such as National Geographic is doing, are using gaming style programs to engage a new, previously not engaged audience of teenagers. Uh, next slide. This concept is addressing the theme athletics at play. This is an anamorphic sculptural gateway. A playful gateway creates a welcoming sense of arrival. The exhibit theme is John Chavis Memorial Park has a long history of fostering sports and athletics. Many notable professional athletes in tennis track and field, football, basketball, and baseball started their careers as youngsters in John Chavis Memorial Park. The approach, a playful gateway creates a welcoming sense of arrival. Location could be the entrance into the track and ball field, which you can see in the lower left corner. It could be located in a current dead space, which faces the neighborhood and creates an inviting entrance to the track and ball field. The design approach are, is an anamorphic, colorful silhouettes painted on a welcoming three-dimensional sculpture made of rectangular shapes of internally lit perforated metal. Internal illumination is constantly changing using LEDs in the interior of the cubes that um, are constantly changing with colored lighting, pushing out of the circular perforations. This concept evokes a fun sense of the history, activity, and leisure at the park. Illustrations are active sketch-like expressions of athletic motions made of rainbow colors. Surfaces can, can contain illustrations, along with some surfaces with text about the history of athletics and athletes and their coaches, who became notable professional athletes through their training at the park. Here I am showing examples of, by the artist Pablo Romero. However, illustrations could be created, designed by David Wilson or other local artists. Next slide. This is a program of interpretive plimps. Interpretive plimps guide visitors to stories. Beacons light the way to interpretive opportunities. Um, these are, this is a program of interpretive plimps, but we are showing an example of what one of these plimps could look like. And this addresses the theme, a legacy of service. The exhibit theme here is as World War II loomed on the horizon, President Roosevelt understood the unprecedented need for service in our country, and he pushed to open doors for African Americans in the military who had previously been all but excluded from service. 
So this design approach are four-sided interpretive plinths. They are square. Um, the location would be at interpretive sites. Um, design features, these are tall interpretive plinths that present storylines using historic images, graphics, and text. You can see that these are about 10 feet tall. A beacon at the top, is there is a light panel located at the top um, of the plinth that provides way showing guidance to the plinths and to inform of a point of interest opportunity. Imagery on the interpretive plinths can be a combination of super graphics visible from a distance to attract, such as you see in the example here on the right hand side, along with interpretive information located in the ADA reading area of the panel and to a scale for reading up close. Look, interpretive plinths can be located at many sites in the park telling different interpretive stories. Next slide. Okay, thank you so much, Therese. And this concludes our formal presentation. As Luke mentioned to you at the beginning, the purpose of this meeting and presentation is to get your feedback on what you have seen. So we have three questions that we'd like for you to ponder and give us feedback on. And I'll talk about uh, how to give us feedback um, in just a minute. Uh, number one, do the key messages capture the park's significance and story? Number two, what interpretive concept and message do you feel is most important for visitors coming to the park to know? And number three, what interpretive programs and events do you think should be offered at the park? We want you to think about these three questions and give us your feedback, particularly uh, number two, about the interpretive concepts and messages that you feel are important. I'm going to go over to our website and talk about the ways that we can, um, that we have provided and will be providing for you to give us feedback. And Juliet, if you will, um, thank you. Uh, we'll be sharing the screen here. And um, we want to make sure that the, uh, that you have all of the information that you need uh, for uh, the opportunities that we are providing. This is the project website. And this is where all information and lots of information can be um, uh, obtained and viewed. And as we go through the process, information will be posted here. But more specifically, to give uh, you the opportunity to provide feedback on what you've seen today. And all of this information will be provided and posted here to the website. If you tab down to the planning uh, tab and it will um, open up and allow you to uh, check out the draft plan and leave your feedback. And um, the uh, I'm going to just demonstrate here shortly as we are uh, talking. Um, it will give you an opportunity, it provides the opportunity for you to give us feedback via publicinput.com. This presentation will be posted here as well as the concept displays. And uh, we really want you to, to, to uh, participate and let us know what you think. The second way that we are providing for you to give us feedback is that in um, light of, in lieu of the uh, December 1st in-person meeting, we are going to place the displays in the John Chavis Park Community Center for you to go by and view if you want an up close and personal view of uh, the concepts. You'll be able to uh, visit the community center during their um, opening hours between December 1st and December 15th and uh, give us your feedback. There will be com comment forms that you can leave us comments on, or if you'd like to go back now to, then to the website, you can do that. But we do want you to uh, take the time and let us know what you think. We really appreciate your participation today, and we look forward to uh, hearing back from you on your thoughts about our process. And we thank you very much for uh, participating with us today and for viewing this presentation and um, 
we will say goodbye. Thank you, everyone.